Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to talk about um, the pumping lemma in non-regular languages. This is our first lesson in our third module. This is where uh, the third module begins and in our third modu module we're going to cover mostly non-regular languages. We're going to talk a bit about context-free languages, um, push-down automatons, and context-free grammars. But for starters we're going to talk about try to distinguish regular from non-regular languages. So these, uh, I'm for today's lesson, I'm going to split it into multiple videos. Each video is going to cover a single bullet point on the, the various items that we're going to learn today. We are covering section 1.4 of the ITC book. So if you want to have a bit more information in the textbook format, feel free to follow that along. So first we're going to, and in this video, we're going to introduce non-regular languages by first describing what are regular languages. Then we're going to talk a bit about the pumping lemma, which is, as you will see, the, me the formal mechanism we have to reason about non-regular languages. Then we are going to introduce the pumping lemma formally using clock. Next, we're going to be proving a language. Um, we're going to show formally that a language is uh, not regular. So we're going to do first just to give you a flavor of the intuition behind the proof. And then I'm going to show you uh, an already ready-made proof uh, done in clock. So we're going to see that as well. So what is a regular language? So if you go to the book, definition 1.16, which is right in the beginning, will tell you that a, a regular language um, is defined if you can, if you, if you have a an automaton M that describes that uh, language. So that is to say that you have some automaton such that the um, language it recognizes is equivalent to the given language that you want to show that it is regular. So for instance, if you have this automaton, which is an NFA, is this is the, the language given by this NFA regular? And the answer, as you probably know, is yes, it is regular. Why? Because I can convert this NFA, as we've learned in our last lesson, we can convert an NFA into a DFA. So if we can convert into a DFA, an equi which has an equivalent language, that means that the language of N1 is regular because there is some DFA that recognizes the language of N1. So, next example, let's say we have a regular expression that says that we either accept zero or a sequence of uh, once, which is possibly empty, right? So is this regular? And as you've learned as well, yes, this ex this langu the language of the regular expression is regular because we can convert this regular expression into an NFA, which we then convert into a DFA. Or we use the previous theorem, and because we know that any NFA, if you have a language that is recognized by an NFA, that language is regular. And because the language in the, trans in the equivalence is the same, that means that the regular expression, the language derived by the um, regular expression is itself regular as well. So we can define this new theorem that says that if you have a language that is equivalent to some regular expression, to the language given by the, the regular expression, then L1 is regular. Okay, so what we've learned from here is that we have three different ways of identifying, of proving if a language is regular. And we actually discussed the three of them, right? We, we saw how we can define an, a DFA, we saw how we can define an NFA, and we saw how we can define a regular expression. And in your homework, we even saw how we can prove that a certain regular expression has a certain um, language. We use that equivalence equals equals operator to prove those results. So that is in our last homework assignment. So let's look at this example. This is L4 because that's how it's shown in the, um, in the Turing slash regular language. So if you look at this language, L4, 
you will see that it has zero, the, it has a sequence of zeros followed by a sequence of ones, where the number of zeros is the same of the number of ones. Okay, so you have, if you have three zeros, you will have three ones in this language. Um, but for instance, uh, a string with only three zeros and two ones would not be an L4, right? But one with a hundred zeros followed by a hundred ones would be an L4. So the question is, is this language regular? And as you might imagine, the reason I'm giving you a lot of emphasis in this language is because it is not. So if you think really hard, it will be very hard to come up with a regular expression or an FA or a DFA that recognizes this. And indeed, any attempt that you make in doing so will be an incorrect one because there is no DFA, there is no regular expression, and there is no NFA that is able to recognize such a language. The intuition behind this is because DFAs and NFAs and regular expressions, they miss a capability of counting, so they have no memory, okay? <coughs> That's the intuition. And because they have no memory, they are unable to be able to recognize a, a language that requires a need of, a, of a memory, right? We need to know how many zeros have we read to be able to know how many ones we need to read, right? Only after reading X amount of zeros now we know only after reading the zeros now we know we need to also read x amount of ones okay and nfas dfas and regular expressions do not give us that capability okay so we know that how do we prove that how do we prove that the language is not regular how do we prove that there is no possible regular expression that would be able to describe this well there are many ways in which you could go ahead and try to prove this. But the most common way is to use a result known as the pumping lemma, okay? And in the next video, what we're gonna be learning is first, what is this pumping property? And how can we use it to conclude that a language is not regular? That's gonna be the subject of our next video.